Welcome to a special Thursday edition of Shore Sports Zone High School Football. I'm Rich Crampanis. Thanks to the spread out schedule this week, we'll be able to bring you a record number of games, hopefully in the 18 to 19 range, bringing you all the week four action in Shore Conference football. We get started in Rumson, where we had a matchup of unbeatens. St. John Vianney taking on Rumson Fairhaven. This one had plenty of fireworks. Big storyline heading into this game, Charlie Volker, the 2,000 yard rusher, out with a high ankle sprain, but he was there to cheer his teammates on. It was a 14-7 St. John Vianney lead in the second quarter, but here come the Bulldogs. The sophomore quarterback, Michael O'Connor, gets free. 25 yard run all the way down to the 13 yard line. It would lead to Sam Eisenstadt, a one yard plunge. We're tied up at 14 apiece. On the ensuing kickoff, Khalil Haskins looking to make something happen. He's got some room in the open field, but he fumbles. Connor Kelly picks up the bounce, and Rumson Fairhaven is back in business. But the momentum would swing back to St. John Vianney because on the next play, O'Connor to the air, picked off by Joshua Taylor. Back-to-back -back turnovers. Still in the second quarter, this is Matt Vicarelli. And look at Vicarelli coming right at you. 47-yard run all the way down to the 11 yard line. And then O'Connor goes back to work. How does he escape this tackle? A Harry Houdini move for Michael O'Connor, an 11 yard touchdown run. It's 20 to 14 with 3.47 to go in the second. Then under a minute to go, it's third and long. Looks like RFH is just gonna run out the clock. Uh-uh, O'Connor has other things in mind. He gets in the open field and he's gone. A 73-yard touchdown run. It's 28-14, Rumson Fairhaven by two touchdowns at the half. But whatever Mark Ciccatelli said in the halftime locker room, it worked because St. John Vianney came out with an attitude in the third quarter. This is Calvin Beatty, a great run here, gain of 20 yards. Anthony Brown caps off the drive, nine-yard touchdown run. It's 28-21 with 8.06 to go in the third. And the third quarter was complete dominance by St. John Vianney. Closing seconds now, it's Brown again. Boy, he disguises that ball well. It's a 21-yard touchdown run for Anthony Brown. We're tied up at 28 at the end of three. Fourth quarter now, O'Connor. Boy, he had himself a football game. 265 yards, three touchdowns. This is a 31-yard run, but the drive would stall. And then St. John Vianney turns to one of its many weapons, Khalil Haskins. Remember he fumbled earlier in the game? Well, he's gonna make up for it in a big way. 48 yards, Haskins makes it 35-28. Now Rumson Fairhaven would hang onto the football for the final seven minutes plus. It's fourth down, they're in St. John Vianney territory, but Raphael August comes up with a quarterback sack. And what a football game in Rumson on Thursday night. 35 to 28 is your final. This game had all sorts of swings. It was 14 nothing St. John Vianney early. Then Rumson Fairhaven completely took control thanks to Michael O'Connor. But the second half belonged to the Lancers. They're now 4-0 on the season. Haskins with the game winner. Brown with a couple of big touchdown runs in the second half. We talked to both of them after the victory. Our coaches, they told us that it's not us. We got to fight as a family, and we should come out like that and play through the whole game. So if we come out in the third quarter like we did in the beginning, we win this game big. My teammates, you know, we went to halftime, and they told me to keep my head in the game. And Coach, um, he called a great play call, and it worked. Yeah, I think they grew up a little bit tonight. You know, we challenged them all week. Um, we, don't, we, we, didn't, we didn't think we saw the improvement that, that we should have saw in the past couple weeks. Um, you know, it's a tribute to them. and. Uh, you know, we, we were able to run the football a little bit in the second half. First year head coach Rodney Taylor and the Neptune Scarlet Flyers with a Thursday night matchup at home against Red Bank Regional. It was the Scarlet Flyers debut of Royal Moore, the transfer from Ocean Township High, showing off his wares here. Great run to the 13 yard line. It would lead to Savior King finding the end zone from 10 yards out. Neptune has a 9 0 lead. But on the ensuing kickoff, one of the great skilled players in the Shore Sports Zone Nation, this is Sadiq Palmer. 
and he does something special here. 99 yards. He takes it all the way to make it a 9-7 ball game. More Royal Moore now. Take a look at the moves by Royal Moore. A great run all the way to the 35-yard line. Then it's Ralph McLean going to the air. His favorite target is Isaiah Calhoun. All he does is make big plays. This is a 51-yard touchdown. It's 16-7 Neptune early in the second. And we have seen a lot of Isaiah Calhoun highlights on ShoreSportsZone.com. He does it on both sides of the field. Here he picks off Jack Nowitzki with the INT. Second half now. We see more Royal Moore. It's a different team for Neptune with Royal Moore in the mix. The spin moves, the great job. It leads to O'Shane Curate with the last touchdown of the game. Neptune would add a two-point conversion. They go on to a 24-7 win over Red Bank Regional. For the Bucks. it's their first loss of the season. The story on Royal Moore, he had to sit out 30 days after transferring from Ocean Township, even though he's been at Neptune for quite some time. The NJSIAA making that ruling. And with Royal Moore in the mix, Neptune breaks a two-game losing skid, and they get a quality victory at home over Red Bank Regional, 24-7 the final. In Middletown, Steve Antonucci and the Middletown South Eagles playing host to Freehold Township. Second quarter, it's already 7-0 South. Matt Mascara finds Tom Marin. This is a 17-yard gain to the 21-yard line. It would lead to this. Cole Rogers, he's got a nose for the end zone. An 11-yard touchdown run. It's 13-0 Middletown South in front. Later in the second, it's Mascara back to the air again. Finds Patrick Crow. We've seen Crow make a lot of plays on defense. He's a good tight end as well. This is a 25-yard gain all the way to the 20-yard line. And the first half would close out thanks to Matt Mascara's 23-yard field goal. That made it 16-0 at the half. 44-0 is your final. So Middletown South improves to 3-1 on the season. The Eagles continue to impress their lone loss coming to South Brunswick. Freehold Township has gotten through the tough part of their schedule. They'll look to get back on track next week. Should be a good matchup when Freehold Township takes on Tom's River East. The Middletown North Lions hitting the road after a bye week. They would have their hands full with the Manalapan Braves. Coming off that big win over Sayreville, but hang on. Middletown North came to play. This is the second play from scrimmage. Donald Glenn, a couple of nice fakes here. Tyler Thompson's got it in the open field. And Thompson is off to the races. 82 yards. It's 7-0 Middletown North. Now the Lions weren't done there. I want to stop it right here and show you what Jordan Pitts does right here. You know, the normal reverse is a guy just kind of runs behind the quarterback, but he really sells it like he's running a route. And now when we start the play back up, Pitts has got the reverse. And it's Shockville right now in Manalapin because Jordan Pitts goes 71 yards. It's 14 to nothing, Middletown North. This would be a huge stunner. But good football teams never panic. And Manalapin didn't panic at home. They turned to their workhorse of Mamu Mayfield. He finds the zone. Manalapin's on the board. It's 14-7. Second play of the second quarter, Ben Siskowski. We see him do so many great things at fullback. He gets a touchdown from short range to make it 14-14. Middletown North, hey, they're playing like underdogs. They're throwing the kitchen sink. This is the halfback option, but it didn't work. Dan Debnar with the interception. He's down at the 36-yard line. They would turn that turnover into points. Amamu Mayfield, a 35-yard touchdown run. And now Manalapin has seized the lead. It's 21-14 thanks to three straight Braves touchdowns. North driving once again. It's Glenn to the air. He's picked off by Charles Lombana. Lombana is down at the one-yard line. And once again, Manalapin goes to work. Dan Anarella finds Reggie Hodge Rocourt. This is a 15-yard scoring play. It's 28-14, Manalapin has control. But Middletown North on the final play of the first half, check this out, Glenn throws it to the back of the end zone. Thompson, his second touchdown catch. At the half, we've got a football game. It's 28-20.
but Manalapan would show their dominance in the second half. Mayfield has been tremendous all season long. Here he goes right up the gut, 28 yards. And then, if it isn't enough, Manalapan has depth at the skill position because Amamu's backup is Dan Debner, and he is a pretty darn good running back as well. Watch him go 40 yards for the score. Manalapan goes on to the 56-34 win over Middletown North. If you're head coach Steve Bush, you have to be encouraged that your team, the Middletown North Lions, didn't back down against an outstanding opponent. Middletown North sending shockwaves around the short conference with that early 14-0 lead, but Manalapan settles down, and now the challenge for the Braves is to not look too far ahead. Coming up October 17th and October 24th, big, big games, Middletown South and RBC back-to-back, -back, but there's work to be done before that. Manalapan is now 4-0 on the season. Week four got started in freehold as the Colonials look to go to 4-0 on the season, taking on the Raritan Rockets. First quarter, this is Josh Dixon on the end around. And we have seen Dixon do this all season long. 30-yard gain to the 35-yard line. But this Raritan team came to play. The defense in particular was outstanding. Jake Dean with the quarterback sack. This drive comes to a screeching halt. No worries, though, because Freehold Burrow puts together a nice drive late in the first quarter. Jake Curry to Bailey and Dursky. This is 27 yards, and Curry did a real nice job of running the bootleg there. It led to this. First play of the second quarter, Josh Dixon. 10-yard touchdown run. He's in the end zone once again. It's 7-0, Freehold Burrow in front. Later in the second, fourth and one at midfield. Another big play by the Raritan defense. Ryan Dickinson comes up with a big stop. At the half, we've got a 7-0 ball game. Third quarter, the Rockets strike in a big way. Derek Ernst, he gets into the open field and forget about it, he's gone. A great 56-yard touchdown run by Derek Ernst. The extra point is no good, it's a 7-6 ball game. And then Raritan gets the momentum in a big way. Colby Jones, the onside kick, he's gotta wait 10 yards. It's close, he's got it. And Raritan's back in business. The Rockets would drive it all the way down to the three yard line. It's fourth and goal, Raritan goes for it. They look for the lead, but the pass falls short and Freehold Burrow takes over. It's time for Freehold Burrow to get some breathing room thanks to Jake Curry. This, a 30 yard touchdown run, makes it a 14-6 ball game. The Freehold Burrow defense would do its job and then here's Dixon, a 21 yard run in the fourth quarter all the way down to the 15-yard line. It would lead to the final points of the game. Matt Curcio through the uprights from 34 yards. It was 17 to six, and that is your final. Freehold Burrow is now four and zero on the season. One of the big surprises in 2014, no question about it. We talk so much about Josh Dixon, and once again, as you saw in the highlights, he was outstanding. But the one guy who really caught my eye, maybe the MVP of this game for Freehold Burrow, was Bailey and Dursky. He did some great things on defense. You saw him catch a pass. He was prevalent on special teams. Big game for Bailey and Dursky. As for Raritan, Derek Ernst is an outstanding football player. It's a treat to watch him play. They've been in a lot of different kinds of games. You know, they had that shootout with Manasquan. Now they're in a low-scoring affair. But I think before it's all said and done, we're going to see some good things from the Raritan Rockets in 2014. At Colts Neck High, the Cougars were looking for their first victory of 2014, playing host to the Green Wave of Long Branch. And Dimir Willis has emerged as the top rusher in the Shore Conference. If you visit ShoreSportsZone.com, you'll see him at the top of the list. He'll be there once again. Here, a gain of 23 yards. But the drive would stall. Nick Garjula with a great tackle right here. At the end of one, we have no score. Second quarter now. It's Willis back to work. Here, getting low all the way down to the two-yard line. And watch the job by the offensive line on the right side. They open up a nice hole for Dimir Willis. He takes care of the rest. He's in the zone. It's 7 nothing. How about that long branch defense? John Mimes gets his hand on it. It pops up in the air. Quran Stander gets the INT. You always like to show running backs with their touchdown runs. This is the most impressive run of the day to me. 
Check out Willis. Looks like he's going out of bounds. Uh-uh. His balance and his footwork here. This highlight shows why he's a Division I prospect. Boy, that is a tremendous run to the 16-yard line. They turn it over to their fullback. Earl Mackerson finds the zone. It's 14-0. And Colts Neck trying to get something going. They ran a fake punt last week, and it worked. It didn't work out this time because this one is picked off by Jameer Elliott-Hare. The Long Branch defense pitches a shutout, and Dimeer Willis puts on a dazzling display. 35 to nothing is your final look at the numbers for Dimeer Willis. 307 yards on 31 carries and three touchdowns. What a great crop of running backs in the Shore Conference, and you just saw them in the highlights. You see guys like Amamu Mayfield, Cole Rogers from Middletown South, and now Dimeer Willis from Long Branch. He is having a special year. He'll look to continue to carry it on as Long Branch gets a big road win over Colts Neck. The Manasquan Warriors looking for a third straight win. They'd have another low scoring tussle, this time against Ocean Township. Manasquan hasn't been scoring a lot in the last few weeks, but when they do, it's this guy, Bubba McAlary. There he goes. A 53-yard touchdown run. Manasquan's on the board. It's 7-0. On the ocean side of things, there's been one player on defense who always shows up on our highlights, number 25, Frank Henry. Here he is making another big-time play. This one stayed 7-0 into the fourth quarter. Defense was the story on both sides. Check out John Morris. Morris and Cowley, part of that linebacking core. And in the end, with about two and a half minutes to go, it's McAlary doing it again. Another touchdown for James Bubba McAlary. This one's a 50-yard run. McAlary had over 200 yards on the ground. That made it 14-0 Manasquan. Ocean would score late. The Warriors recover an onside kick, and it's another low-scoring win for Manasquan. The Warriors come through with a 14-7 win over Ocean. Remember, this Ocean team has got Tyler Thompson. They got Marcus Blackman, Pickett. They got a lot of weapons. What a great job by the Manasquan defense to keep Ocean Township at bay as the Warriors win by seven on Thursday afternoon. The action continues all weekend long right here on ShoreSportsZone.com. We will be with you on Friday and Saturday with the highlight show, plus on Sunday highlights of Howell and Southern Regional. And now a new wrinkle to our offense, the Shore Sports Zone app is here. Just go to Google Play or the iTunes App Store and type in Shore Sports Zone in the search bar, and you can have all the high school football action and high school sports right on your phone or tablet. For our team, Luke Crampanis, Diane Crampanis, Alex Lorenzo, and TJ Brustowitz. I'm Rich Crampanis. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you on Friday with more high school football right here on ShoreSportsZone.com.